Hello, welcome to Anita the Pedagogue channel. Today, we continue with our lessons on Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, that bridge diversion. Today, we are looking at the literary devices and themes. So, for the literary devices, there is the use of alliteration in the abridged version. An example of an alliteration is the food tasted terrible and it was far from filling. So, alliteration is the repetition of the initial consonant sound. So, the sounds has been highlighted, the sounds that have been repeated in the expression. Also, she was twisted with age and trembling with pain. So, the initial consonant T, the sound T has been repeated. Monster, Medra, cried his one-time friends. So the repetition of the M sound. Personification, giving inanimate objects human attributes. So a cold, deadly feeling creeps over the boy. So a cold, deadly feeling cannot creep. So that is the use of personification. Then there is the use of hyperbole, extreme exaggeration. An example is Mr. Limpkin's eyes fled dangerously, and that is an exaggeration. Again, the boy who looked too weak to even kill a fly. The way Oliver was described here, was too weak to even kill a fly, is an exaggeration held Noah by the truth and threw him to the ground. Then Nancy thought that a great gulf separated her from the elegant rose Maylie. So a great gulf separating the two of them is an exaggeration. Imagery. Imagery is using vivid description that appeals to a reader's senses to create an image that appeals to the five senses. An example is Mr. Limpkin's eyes fled dangerously. He stormed the door and yelled for Mr. Bumble, who got very angry with Oliver. And this appeals to our sense of sight. He got to his knees and begged the judge not to hand him to a cruel man like Mr. Gamfield. Without a second, the judge tore up the papers and ordered Mr. Bumble to take Oliver back. Mons is tall and strong. He is 26 with dark hair and eyes. His face is old and sunken. He has terrible fits, so his lips are purple and covered with teeth marks. Sometimes he bites his own hands. He has a large clock, but if you watch carefully, he's got a broad red mark like a barn. Simile. Simile is comparing two ideas or more using as light or than. An example is he got to his knees and begged the judge not to hand him to a cruel man like Mr. Gumfield. A sad thing to watch the poor little Oliver hang onto that piece of meat which tasted almost like rubber. Oliver came across a boy his own age who dressed and acted like a man. They ordered her to dress well like a lady. He got a broad red mark on his throat like a burn. His head bursting with information, Noah ran to Fagan's house as fast as he could. Onomatopoeia The use of words to mimic sounds What did you say? He roared. So roared. The manner in which it was said was roared. Stop whining. If it wasn't for me, you would have never gotten out of that place. Whining is the onomatopoeia. Please say, might I have some more? He whispered. So the manner in which this was said. What's an apprentice, sir? Whispered Oliver. So he whispered. Where is he? He roared. So the manner in which this expression was said was roared. Oliver will blab to the police and get us all into trouble. So blab. There was a loud bang and Oliver staggered back. So the sound bang. Rhetorical question. You've got him back. What more do you want? Isn't it enough that you made him a thief? So rhetorical question is the question that doesn't demand an answer. There's also been the use of idiom. By joining a band of robbers, he almost broke his mother's heart. 
so to break his mother's heart is to disappoint. Metaphor, the boy is burning up with fever, so representing how hot he is to fever. A metaphor is when you compare two or more things directly. She is my life, my love. So saying one thing is another thing. She being my life and my love. Let's go on and look at the themes. The first thing we will look at is the failure of charity groups and orphanages. Charity groups are governmental or non-governmental organizations who are charged with helping the homeless, less privileged, the needy or sick in society to have a better life. However, in the novel Oliver Twist, we see otherwise where the poor, needy and homeless are subjected to the cruelty that affects their fundamental rights of having food and a good shelter. In the novel, the characters Mr. Bumble and Mrs. Mann are the officials who run the workhouses, but they do so wickedly such that no proper care is given to the children and people in the workhouse. Instead, they are starved and given no adequate clothing and general maintenance. The story is a wake-up call to all charity groups and orphanage managers to care for orphans and the needy in their institutions properly. Another theme is there is hope even in corrupt environments. So there are good people in places where we find bad people. The character Oliver Twist chose to be a good person even among the pickpockets of Fagin. He continually chooses to be good even when Bill Sykes points a gun at him during the burglary mission. Oliver refused to do wrong. Nancy is also an excellent example of the exhibition of positive and good traits, even among wicked or bad people. She had compassion for Oliver and decided to help him, even at the cost of her life. This goes to show that there is hope for even the people who do bad things and that there can be a turning point for people who live in corrupt, immoral, and evil societies. This brings us to the end of our discussion on literary devices and themes of Oliver Twist. In this series, you'll find the plot analysis and summary and also the character analysis of Oliver Twist.